All right, exponential decay, connecting to negative exponents, which you should have already learned about negative exponents in your study, in your mathematical studies, is that a to the negative n, this negative sign, is actually not really a negative sign, but it's really, really tiny words. Not really, but tiny words that say flip the base. So what you have to do is it's an instruction and not a negative sign. What that means is you go and look at the base and flip the base, so it's 1 over a. The negative then disappears because you've now flipped the base and it becomes 1 over a. This exponent n is applied to both the numerator and the denominator so that you get 1 to the power of n over a to the power of n, which gives you an answer of 1 over a to the n. Now, what happens if you have a zero exponent? Well, a zero exponent means that we have, okay, now keep in mind that a cannot be zero in both cases. Anything to the power of zero, with the exception of zero itself, is equal to one. Why is that the case? Let's look at an example. m over, if we look at this, m over n, m to the n divided by m to the n will cancel each other out to give you one. But if I subtract the exponents n minus n, I get m to the power of zero. That, folks, is also equal to one. So there is your proof that it always equals one. It's basically the numerator canceling with the denominator. All right, now that we've gone over this, let's look at some examples that involve some exponents. So you're asked to evaluate each of the following. So here's a bunch of simplified questions that we need to simple, uh, get the final answer to evaluate. What is 3 to the power of negative 2? Well, that is 1 over 9, or 1 over 3 squared, if you want to think about it. Because this negative takes the base, flips it, 1 over 3, to the exponent of 2, 1 gets squared, the 3 gets squared, you get 1 over 9. This here is you have to add the exponents. Once you add the exponents, that gives you 6 to the power of 1. That answer is always 6. And finally, the next one is this means multiply. You multiply these two, you get 6. Divided 4 to the 6, divided by 4 to the 8, equals 4 to the negative 2. Another way to do it is to divide, write it in a division statement like this. And that will also give you 4 to the negative 2. And... When we do that, 4 to the 6, or 4 to the 8, is 1 over 4 squared. 4 to the negative 2 is 1 over 4 all squared, which is 1 over 16 as our final answer. Now, I think what's happening here is a lot of you need to recap some of the exponential rules. So let's do a little bit of recap. So I think that this is where the confusion is happening here. So we're going to do a little recap right now. All right. So m to the n times m to the p, we're going to review some of the rules for exponentials. So when we have two powers being multiplied and you have the same base, what do you do with the exponents? That's right, you add them. The next one, the next rule that we're going to learn is m to the n divided by m to the p. What do we do here? That's right, we subtract the exponents, m to the n minus p. Let's look at another one, m to the n, all to raised to the power of p. That equals m to the n times p, np. Next, these, before I forget, these have the base and the exponent together cannot equal zero. So that's going to be important. Both the base and the exponent together can never equal zero. Now let's look at another one m to the power of 0 means that it always equals 1. We just looked at a review of that. Again, m cannot equal 0. Another case, m to the negative n equals 1 over m to the n, which means the numerator gets the n, and so does the denominator. One, and, that turn, and then finally, the last bit is this one. We're going to be studying that on the next day, and this one's going to be important for you to understand, but we'll go over this. So this is the last rule that we have to do. 
Another couple of rules we have to follow, guys, is the is this rule here. A product all raised to a power. Each individual piece of the product gets that power. And finally, the same goes for a division statement. Both the numerator and the denominator get those that exponent. So these are different rules that you learned last year. This is the multiplication law, division law, power law, zero exponent law, negative exponent law. This one's called the rational exponent law, power of a product, power of a quotient. So these are different laws that you learned in grade 9. Other than this last one, which is the new one for grade 11, these were involved in grade 9, these and these. This, these two were left for grade 10. And finally, this law is one that's introduced in grade 11, which we'll see on the next day. So we're not going to focus a lot on that. Now going back to the zero exponent and negative exponent we had earlier. Let's look back at that. So if we were to do these questions again, could you do them? Well, I hope that the first one you would still get 1 over 9. The second one you would get 6. And the third one you would end up with 1 over 16. But however you approach it, as long as your solution is mathematically sound, I'm going to give you the full marks that involve this. So again, C would have been 1 over 16, which is the final answer. All right, moving forwards. Look at another example. Simplify using positive exponents only. So let's look at these three. x to the negative 2 times x to the negative 3 times x to the 4. And then part B has m's and n's. And part C has u, v's, and exponents. So let's go through each of these. First of all, this how all these three powers have the same base, and they're all being multiplied. So what do we do with the exponents? That's right, we add them. That gives you negative 1. x and negative 1 is a perfectly good answer, but it's not the final answer. We need to have positive exponents only. That means we have to change this. This will turn itself into 1 over x. Next, b. We have this. What do we do with the exponents? Okay, is m to the 3. The reason it's 3 is 2 minus negative 1. And negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. This would be our final answer, but there's a negative here. So what happens is this will now move to the bottom, 1 over n to the power of 5, which equals m3 to the n5. And notice these red arrows. These red arrows mean you could have gotten from straight here right to the answer and not been penalized. And again, you could have gone from here straight to the answer without being penalized. Let's look at the last one. What do we do here? Well, all of this is raised to an exponent. All of this is a product. So a product raised to an exponent means that we can use the, pow uh, the power of a product law. The power of a product says the exponent goes to each piece of the product. So 3 to the negative 3, u to the negative 9, and v to the 6. Well, this, this moves itself to the bottom. This also moves to the bottom. And don't forget, we have to evaluate 3 to the power of 3. What we'll have as a final answer is v to the 6 over 27u to the 9. And this answer, you would. this is the shortest way to get to that answer, because you do need to show me some work here. All right, moving forwards. You're asked to evaluate this particular function. And let's look at the answer. Again, it's, pow it's power of a product. So each piece, first of all, we can do the inside, expand it, by reduce and reduce, we get 1 40th, all raised to the negative 2, and that will mean 40 to the power of 2, which is 1600. Now another way you could have approached it was given the negative 2 to each piece and simplified that way. You would still get the final answer of 1600. All right, next, expon exponential decay functions 
as x increases, the y values decrease. So it always looks like this. Or in this case, it could look like this. What's happening here is as x increases, the y values decrease. They're going downwards. So now the graph decreases at a decreasing rate. That's a constant com uh, factor. They have a repeating exponential pattern of finite differences which is called the ratio of successive finite differences is constant. And what does this all this mumbo jumbo mean? All it means, folks, is that when you do it, look at a table of values, you'll notice that for any table of values of an exponential, you will always have a common factor. As opposed to a common difference or first difference or second difference, we're looking at a common factor, a number that can be multiplied to get to the next number. Now, it always has a common product, okay, and we're going to look at an example here uh, from your workbook or your homework about polonium 210, and basically questions about how to set up the table, looking at this, so here's a table, and it asks you to write an equation. How do we get that equation? And we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so the first part, part A, says create a table of values that gives the amount of polonium 210 remaining at the end of five intervals of 20 days each. So we go each 20 days, and what happens is it goes half of its lifespan in every 20 days. Now, f at x is equal to a to the bx, that would be this one. We need to find out what everything means here. a turns out to be 40. Why is it 40? Well, we started originally with 40. a is the starting letter of the alphabet. a is the starting number that we started with in terms of whatever substance we're looking at. A half indicates half-life. If it was doubling, like bacteria, you would have a 2 here. But in half-life, we have a 1 half, 1 over 2. The next part is the exponent. How do we explain that? Well, x is the number of days that has passed. We have to divide that by 20 because sometimes we don't, don't go the full 20. We may go 30 days. What happens in 30 days? And what does the bacteria cells look like? Well, that's how we can describe that. So how many, back, how many cells do we have left? Now, when we look at that type of question, we have some other answers for this. So for example, to sketch, we won't look at a sketch now. How many punch polonium-210 will remain after 10 weeks? How long will it take for the amount of polonium-210 to decay to 8% of its initial mass? Describe tools and strategies. And then we're not going to look at F. So we're not looking at C, but we're going to look at D and E. So let's look at a couple of examples here. So in terms of D, here's our equation that we've had. Y equals, so F at X equals 40 times a half to X power 20. And we want to know how many will be left after 10 weeks. Well, 10 weeks, we need to find out how many days that is. Well, we take 10 weeks times it by 7 days per week, and that gives us 70. What we plug in for x is 70 up here, and we take 40 times a half to the power of 70 divided by 20. Well, when I type it into the calculator, as you can see on the screen here, this is the answer that we get, 3.5355. Remember that we stop here at the fourth number, and we look at the next number after that. Here there's a 3, that means that this 5 stayed the same. And that's how I got 3.5355 milligrams of polonium 210. All right, E. What do we do with E? Well, we need to know what eight per, when 8% 8 of the product is left. 8% of the product means that we have to start with 40 and calculate 8% of that 40, and that's what this value is here. On the other side, we have the equation, so I'm just going to go over this really slowly with you. We have the equation, just like that, and when now we solve. So this we solve. We could probably divide by 40 if you wanted to, and 
and it, it, it won't matter, folks. You could divide by 40 and get 0 0.08 and find the answer. Or we can ex multiply, divide by 40. And then what you're going to do is to get this answer, to find out what the value of x is, we're going to do a little bit of creative, not so creative, but math that you need at a higher level. But in terms of typing it in your calculator, it makes sense to do it the faster way. That is, folks, by, now let's do it, Taking the log of 2 over 25. Where did this number all of a sudden come from? Well, folks, that's 3.2 over 40. Remember that decimal fractions in some calculators is not allowed. So you have to figure out a way to get the answer that you're looking for. 3.2 out of 40, you would then convert to a regular fraction and then find out uh, and then be able to work with it. What we have to do is take the log of both sides, take log of 2 over 25, and you divide it by log of the base. Always true in this case. And that will equal x over 20. That will actually equal the exponent. So log of the answer divided by log of the base is equal to the exponent. That is true always. And we're going to learn that more in grade 12. Finally, when we calculate that in our calculator, yes, you can use a log button. Look for it on your calculators. You get 72.8771 days that it will um, take in order to have 8% of the product left over. That is 3.2 grams. All right, folks, that's the end of this video. Have a numerical day.